Thanks for listening to Marketing B2B Tech, the podcast from Napier where you can find out what really works in B2B marketing today. Welcome to Marketing B2B Technology, the podcast from Napier. Today, I'm joined by Bora Gunders. Bora is the CEO of analytics company HockeyStack. Welcome to the podcast, Bora. Yeah, great to be on here. Thank you. Well, it's great to have you on as well. So what we like to do is start by asking people, you know, how they got to where they are today. So tell me a bit about your career journey and why you decided to found HockeyStack. So I've never really had a true full-time job ever in my life. So I can't really talk about a career. Uh, I started coding when I was really young. I think I was like nine. Ever since then, I've been building digital products. That was my obsession throughout my whole life. Uh, So naturally, it led me to try out a couple different products, try selling them and build a company. I failed a couple of times before, but right now, Akistec is the one that stuck out. You didn't found it on your own. I mean, how did you find co-founders to actually start the company? Both of my co-founders, uh, we met while building other stuff. That was a benefit of it. I uh, saw how they worked. I saw their work ethic. I saw what they liked doing, what they didn't like doing. And when we found a good idea, I naturally had two people that would be really passionate about it and stick it out with me. Well, that, that's awesome. You've actually like worked with them previously and got that experience. I think that's great. So can you explain briefly what Hockey Stack does? On the website, Hockey Stack, it says and uh, is an analytics and attribution company for B2B businesses. Basically, what we do is we collect all data about the B2B customer journey from the start to the end, from marketing to sales touch points to customer success touch points. Everything is collected and merged, and then you can analyze that data to understand what really drives revenue for your company. I guess when people think of attribution software, they think of a very narrow set of software. Like traditional attribution software shows you a simple table of sources and how many customers that those sources brought. But what we do is we're building a data discovery platform So you can dig into basically any data that is collected from the customer journey. And that allows you to access really, really accurate attribution rather than just using attribution models and showing that simple table. So, I I mean, that's interesting. I've got loads of questions about how the product works. But I I mean, Bora, I have to ask this question. You know, attribution is famously a difficult problem to solve, particularly in B2B. So why did you pick that area? Was it just because of the challenge? Well, we talked to like 200 to 300 people before even starting out building the product. And every one of those people said their biggest analytics challenge was actually attribution. People don't understand. Still to this day, even large enterprises don't understand how their marketing funnel works, which sources work, which sources don't. Are they getting the value out of what they're spending on a channel? So I guess that's why we wanted to work on it. No, I mean, I I hear this all the time from our clients, actually, that attribution is one of the hardest things. You know, people are spending money and they, to a large extent, it's very hard to know what drove um, prospects to become customers. So I totally agree. It's it's definitely a problem worth solving. So maybe you could talk me through, you know, if somebody's using Hockey Stack as a product, I, I mean, at a high level, can you just walk through what they do to try and understand what marketing activities are driving people to become customers? So there are a couple of ways people approach it. First, let me talk about how it's set up because our setup is one of our biggest differentiators. When you think about a data platform, you usually think about like three months, six months setup cycles. Our setup is completed in five minutes. You connect to all your different data sources by clicking on connect on our UI. You put a simple script on your website. If you have any other software you use that we don't have an integration for, we build the integration for you free of charge. And then once all of that data is collected and merged, you're presented uh, with template dashboards that show you a breakdown of each channel and some reports you find valuable that you see, such as cohorted comparison reports 
for your advertising activity, for your event activity, for your organic channels. And then you're presented with also a really flexible report builder. So you can go in and think of any report you want to create and you can build it yourself. Um, people like to build conversion rate reports by source. And the good thing about collecting all data from all sources together is that you can view conversion rates across the entire funnel. So you can view conversion rates from an email you sent, which is stored on whatever you use to send emails to a deal activity. Or if you use your website as a big channel, you can see conversion rates between your emails to your website. So sky is the limit. You can see conversion rates between anything. You can see the lift of any activity on any conversion rate on your sales cycle. You can see how it affects your sales cycle lengths, which is a big thing that our customers, B2B customers, like to optimize for. Yeah, that's that's pretty much how people like to do attribution nowadays. So I'm just going to ask you a question about something you said at the start of that answer. I'm sure you said you build an interface into whatever product you're using free of charge. Is that right? Yeah, uh, and that's because, one, we're getting pretty fast at building integrations, so it doesn't have much of a cost associated with it. Obviously, if it's like a really, really custom thing, like we have some people who have their own in-house CRM software that they want us to, want us to integrate with, which obviously is not free of charge. But if we see that there's a real deficiency in our product, then we do it free of charge. Wow. So, I mean, a, you know, a standard CRM or advertising platform or whatever that had a decent API and, and a reasonable user base, you'd actually just integrate, you know, whether or not you already had that. That's amazing. Yeah, definitely. I'm I'm not ashamed of admitting that, like, we are an early stage company. We just got started. The product was launched in February 2022 which is pretty, pretty early for a software company. So obviously we won't cover all of the integrations that companies use, but we're willing to make the effort to cover our bases. I, I think that's amazing. I mean, that that's, that's really refreshing. You hear a lot of people talking about how important integrations are on this podcast, and yet they still aren't as flexible as you to, to build them. So I, I think that's amazing. I'll move back to Hockey Stack now and, and ask you some questions. So I think a lot of people, you know, who've maybe done a little bit of, of work with attribution, they're used to different attribution models. So, you know, last touch, first touch, time decay, whatever. It sounds like you're actually taking a slightly different approach where you can go and almost interrogate the data to find out the impact of one particular activity on conversion. Is that what you're doing? You're doing something slightly different or are you trying to you know, simply allocate value for a conversion across different activities? Well, we also provide attribution models. They're the industry standards, so we have to provide them. But our website used to say 100% accurate attribution is a pipe dream. And that is because attribution is not about assigning credit to touch points. Like those models you use, you use the linear model, for example, the linear model breaks down the entire credit into all touch points equally. But in reality, that is not really true. Like the person visited, they maybe saw a certain campaign that affected them a lot. And then they had a couple of different touch points that didn't really affect them. So you can't really know for sure that that credit is true. One, you have to compare across different attribution models. That is where our like flexible report builder comes into play because you can compare different attribution models right on the same report, which nobody else really does. Two, you have to, like you said, really dig into the data to understand the lift of those activities. That table, that attribution table shows you a certain channel has X much credit, but you have to dig into all of those credited deals or companies and see if they actually did those. So we give people a super detailed timeline view of all activity across all stakeholders that a company did uh, from like any source so that they can really at a glance understand what the company was influenced by. And then where this is going in the future is 
we're going to get smarter. We're going to be able to understand just like how we're able to do qualitatively. We're going to be able to understand quantitatively which channel had the most meaningful impact on the customer's journey. I think there's a mathematical way of understanding that, but that's what we'll be working on in the future uh, to make it even more accurate. But I really don't think that attribution models will last like first touch, last touch. Those obviously are inaccurate. Even multi-touch attribution models, I think, are highly inaccurate. And that's interesting. I mean, I, I think a lot of people have seen a similar thing. You know, if you run, say, Google Ads campaign, you know that it's not just the Google Ads that, that's driving that, but Google will apply attribution and, and frankly, you know, quite often do it to, to make their ads product look good, I think. Well, comment about that. <laughs> Google just wrote most of their attribution models, except for their, I think, their last touch and also data-driven. And I'm pretty sure that their data-driven model highly biases their Google Ads product. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I mean, data-driven is kind of a bit of a black box model, isn't it? You don't really know what's going on. It's just just kind of a trust us, it's going to work model. Yeah, <laughs> I think there is uh, a way of like making it work, making that AI-based models work. And we'll also be working on that. But it's just that when Google does it, you obviously know that they're trying to uh, feed their ads product. Yeah, of course. I'm also interested about offline activities. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of tracking um, of attribution online. I mean, is there a way for you to incorporate offline activities into Hockey Stack? Yeah. So we were the first ever company to be able to do not only source based attribution, but action based attribution. That might be really vague to some listeners. But basically, all other attribution companies show you a report broken down by which channel uh, they came from or which type of source they came from, but that you're not able to really track a lot of other touch points. So what we invented is we can attribute one action that happened across the customer journey to another action that happened before it. And that action you attribute to, if you change it to be the event activities, event subscriptions that you collect on your CRM, then you'll be able to attribute revenue or any other metric to your event activity. If you change that to be, for example, content consumption, if you're really heavy on your blog, maybe you can attribute revenue to your blog and you can be, break it down by exactly which blog post they read and really understand what's happening in your content marketing. And you can apply that to any offline or online activity. And presumably a lot of what you're trying to do is make it really easy for the user to actually pick those items because I guess one of the challenges is if you look at you know a mid-size or large-size B2B organization, they're doing an awful lot. So being able to pull out what's important is probably one of the, the big challenges of usability for you. Yeah, definitely. And I believe that their CRM does a lot of the heavy lifting, even though... A CRM as the interface looks really, really complicated. The data we pull from a CRM is super, super valuable. So whatever you input onto there, we can display it for you. That's fantastic. I'm interested now. I mean, is there a particular sort of type of business that you've aimed Hockey Stack at? Is there a particular problem you're trying to solve? Well, we set out the slow analytics for B2B companies with large sales cycles. That's the type of company that has the most trouble tracking their activities because there are so many stakeholders, so many different touch points. Marketing has an effect. Even after the sales conversation starts, marketing still has an effect. So we're trying to really make it easy for B2B companies to track their marketing activity. And when you talk about B2B companies, is this the kind of product that only large enterprises can afford or is it a more affordable product for, for mid-sized companies? Well, we have customers from both segments. The minimum pricing starts from uh, 12K a year, uh, which is pretty affordable for a mid-sized company, I would say. And then for larger companies, I don't think it's that expensive of a product compared to a lot of uh, MarTech and sales tech providers I'm seeing that are billing like crazy amounts, delivering no value. 
Absolutely. And I think also compared to the amount of money you can save by investing in what actually really drives conversions rather than the marketing that's ineffectual. I mean, the, the potential return on investment is huge. Yeah, that's definitely true. I, I mean, just, just changing track a bit. I'm interested to know, you know how you go about marketing Hockey Stack. I mean, you, you talked a little bit before we started the interview that, you know, that that was something you were quite excited about. So tell me what you do in terms of your marketing. Yeah, I think in the beginning of this company, I, for one, didn't understand marketing at all. And we had to go through a lot of challenges trying to get it up and running. And while doing so, I think we got to really, really learn how marketing should be done in 2023. And our philosophy right now is to make our brand appear everywhere. And that sounds super big, but when you think about it, you can appear everywhere for a small set of people at a time. And once you reach a threshold, once people hear you all around them, they have no choice but to come in inbound to asking to do business with you. And like a lot of sales conversations we do start with people saying, oh, it was a long overdue. We, we've been seeing you around all the time. We've been DMing with X person in your team. Like we already have a relationship with most of the people that we have sales conversation with. And even if we don't have a relationship, we have a one-sided relationship where they're consuming our content. And how we go about doing it is we have a list of customers that we want to target list of about 20, 25,000 companies. We select a small set of people from there. We try to show them our content. One, we produce content that is relevant to them. Two, we figure out where they hang out. Currently, they all hang out on LinkedIn. So we push a lot of LinkedIn content. Three, we target them with digital ad advertising. And four, whatever podcast they listen to, whatever community they're part of, we're there. And once that happens for that set of people, we can probably observe the effect of that within three, four weeks. And they start coming in inbound, our inbound volume shoots up. We can attribute it effectively to all those activities we're doing since we're an attribution company. And then we move to the other segment of people. I mean, that's really interesting. That sounds, I, I mean, like you're so focused, you're almost, um, you know, really doing account-based marketing rather than than trying broad brush. You're trying to really focus down, but you're you're not just doing it through classic account-based uh, marketing techniques. You're also looking and trying to understand, you know, as you said, you know, the podcasts that people might be listening to. And, and that's a really interesting approach to focusing your time and your effort. Yeah, I think it's either ABM at scale or it's brand marketing at a smaller scale. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting. I mean, clearly you also believe in frequency. Um, and, and, you know, I, as a follow-on question, you know, I'm interested to know what the best bit of advice you've ever been given in marketing and, and how you've implemented that in campaigns you've run. I've never been given a good piece of advice in marketing. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Uh, I had a lot of advisors when trying to get everything up and running, when we had zero dollars in revenue. I think everyone's journey is different. Every single company is different. What works for a company doesn't work for another company, even though it is the same exact company. Like even if it was the same exact company, it wouldn't work simply because you're doing it the different cohort of people in a different time. If you give it enough time, every single strategy will work. We just needed to find one that we could scale up fast and stick to it. And that's interesting, Bora, because it, it sounds like what you're saying is you've, you've almost got to experiment and find out what works for you because you're, you're almost saying maybe you haven't been given great advice, but perhaps there isn't that magic piece of advice that you can get. Yeah, basically, let me tell you the story of how this all came up. Uh, we weren't growing at all. We had revenue, but this was like early last year. We had launched a product, but couldn't get it up and running. And then we were following the tra traditional marketing playbook, like running ads, doing blog posts, ebooks, etc. And at some point, I thought, we're not growing. We need something that is truly different than 
what we're doing right now because it's obvious that this is going to take a long time. And it's not because the strategy was bad. It's because like we just couldn't make it. So we needed something different that we could scale up fast. So one day, me and my co-founder sat down. We kept all of our growth-related documentation on Notion. We sat down on Notion. We deleted everything. And then we wrote down what we want to test, what we think as prospect of working, what we saw that worked in the past, and basically our strategies for testing that within a single month. And then we got to doing it uh, within two months from all those things we tested, we rolled out like 70% of them. The 30% we kept was the gold mine because we got really good at executing those and we got really fast at getting results from those. Two months later, we saw our first contract signed uh, from a prospect that came from those activities. And then it scaled up from there. And right now, we have really, really good volume. I think we're one of the fastest growing B2B companies in the space. So I guess that works. That's amazing. I, I love the way that you started by throwing everything away and, and, and starting from scratch from first principles. I think that's that that's uh, very impressive and probably very brave as well. Yeah, I mean, it was really obvious that it didn't work. And I think there are a lot of big companies that should do it right now as well. Like I'm talking to a lot of marketing people every day and I'm seeing that 90% of those companies don't really have a good marketing strategy. They're just getting customers because they're big. Mm -hmm. I'm interested. I mean, we've talked about this and, and some of the difficulty around finding the right tactics. And we've also, at the moment, seeing a lot of new tools coming in. And, you know, everyone's freaking out at the moment about AI replacing marketing jobs. One thing we like to ask, you know, all our guests is, if, if you knew a young person who was thinking of going into marketing, what would be your advice? My advice would be to go work at a small early stage startup, uh, really observe everything that they're getting from the market, every signal that they're getting from the market and be able to deliver that company a an asymmetric amount of value by reacting to those signals. It's really easy to do marketing, I think. Uh, you just need to go and try it out yourself and you need a product to work on, that product to be your child so that you can prove yourself and once you make that company work you can basically do anything that's that's great advice i mean it is it is certainly challenging i think for people you know new to the marketing uh, industry to to go into that startup environment but i i love that thought and the feeling that people would have such an accelerated learning curve in the environment yeah uh well the easy way to get into a startup is to provide them value up front a startup will always need you to give them more value than they're giving you. So they're going to give you a low salary. They're going to give you equity. That doesn't really equate to anything. That has a 99% chance of going to zero. Uh, and they're going to give you long hours. They're going to give you no work-life balance. You have to endure that like in the early stages of your career. You can't really seek out work-life balance or a high salary. You just need to endure that, prove yourself out, and then you'll do whatever you want. That's amazing. Invest in yourself by that, you know, tough first few years and uh, then the world's your oyster, I guess. Definitely. This has been amazing. It's been very interesting. We've covered, you know, all sorts of things from career advice all the way through to, you know, I, I think just scratching the surface on on analytics and attribution. Is there anything you feel we should have covered that we haven't talked about? No, I think this was really helpful i'm going to repurpose some kind of that of this as well <laughs> so well I, I mean thank you bora for, for being on the podcast i know that people listening will be interested in maybe asking you questions and, and certainly you know taking a look at hockey stack to see if it can help them understand what are their marketing activities are actually generating revenue so how could people contact you if they want more information yeah i'm really active on linkedin uh so if you dm me there I'll definitely see it. I read all my messages, respond to all of them. That's great. And what about the product? Where should people go to find out more about Hockey Stack? To find out more about Hockey Stack, we have a great website, good copy, hockeystack.com. We have a live demo. You can go and play with the product yourself. That is the entire product that we put on there. Like we put the exact product you see onto the website and you can play with it 
for free without giving out anything. That's fantastic. That's probably, I think, you know, a great marketing tool as well. It gives people a really good understanding of the capabilities that probably goes way beyond any number of web pages trying to explain it. You know, I think that's one of the best things we ever did. And it was by accident. <laughs> that's great. And I think maybe that's a, a story for another podcast. I mean, Bora, thank you so much for being such a great guest on the podcast. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to Marketing B2B Tech. We hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, please make sure you subscribe on iTunes or on your favorite podcast application. If you'd like to know more, please visit our website at napierb2b.com or contact me directly on LinkedIn.